It's TK Friday, and today in the joy of editing, I'll be editing an infrared image. Something new, something different. It's going to be a lot of fun. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Cully. It is TK Friday, my favorite day of the week. Something different today, an infrared image. This image was sent into me by Steve Zimmick. And as always, you can download the image as well as the PDF notes. I'll have Dropbox links in the description below this video so you could give this edit a try out for yourself. The name of this video is called Embracing Happy Accidents. And just a little backstory. As always, Tony and I talk on Wednesdays. I show my edit and we discuss things about the edit and so on. And when I showed him this image, I said, Tony, I have something a little different for you today. It's an infrared image. And I showed him my editing process. And when I was done, it was this image in color, right? And Tony's like, Dave, infrared images are generally in black and white. And I said, oh, I've never, <laughs> I've never edited an infrared image before. But it turned out really good. And the happy accident is at the end, I turned this into a black and white image using the TK Magic Mixer. And it was really simple and easy to do, as you'll see at the end of the edit. So stay tuned and watch the whole thing. If you don't have the Magic Mixer, that's okay. You can use the Photoshop Channel Mixer to do it. And I'll give you all the numbers to put in there to convert it over. So I got you covered. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. Thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. Well, let's dive right in. I'm going to keep this Lightroom part very brief so we can jump right into the edit because I have a lot to cover today. Anyway, I did some basic adjustments just to keep this image relatively flat looking. That's the way I like to get it into Photoshop and work on it with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Steve sent me a profile for his infrared camera, which I used, and I do my typical uh, lens corrections and so on. So, But let's jump right in so we can get right into this. If you watch my videos every week, you see what I do. So let's dive in. I just right click on the image, go to edit in, edit in Photoshop 2024, but I'm already there. And here we are in Photoshop, ready to get started with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. Like I said, I thought I was just going to process this as a color image. Now, I could have started out with a black and white conversion, but as I said, I thought I was processing it as a color image. And you know what? I really liked it as a color image, but this way you have the advantage of processing it in color if you like that look. And then at the end, you can convert it to black and white. And then you have two different versions that you can go with. So again, I think this is a good, happy accident. Because as the painter Bob Ross would say, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. And I totally agree with Bob Ross. As always, I like to start out with balance and contrast. Now, I'll do the balance and contrast on the foreground separately from the sky. On either the combo or the CX panel, look for this button right here. Hold your command or control key down and click on this. This will select your sky and save it out as a channel. Then hold your command or control key down again and double click it. And now that'll save out the foreground. You notice I have a sky and a foreground. Next, go up to your multi mask panel and click on this luminosity mask button. And I always use a midtones three. And that just protects shadows and highlights from clipping. And I know I say this every week. It just keeps us from losing detail in the darkest darks and the lightest lights. And now we just need to output this to a color grading tool. So click this button on the multi mask panel. And you can see there's that Midtones 3 mask. And now we need to duplicate it because we have a sky and a foreground. So click this button right here. You duplicate it. And now click on the first layer to make it active. And now we're going to use one of my favorite tools in TK9, and that's the layer mask calculator. So we'll click this button right here, but don't just click it. Hold your command or control key down as you click it, and that'll keep this panel open until you click this X. Now simply click on foreground. We want to intersect that foreground with this mids three layer mask. Click X, and now we can see it's intersected. 
Now click on the top color grading tool to make it active. Click on sky and again click X and now the sky is intersected with the MIDS 3 mask. And now click on the first color grading layer to make it active. Now you can go ahead and click this X on the layer mask calculator and just close it down and now I have my combo panel back. I'll start out with the midtones, so click on the midtone button and I'll drag this slider to the left to darken up the midtones a bit. Now when you drag the slider, you don't see a change until you release the left click of your mouse. And I want to darken them up to right there, a minus 31. Now let's work on the shadows. Let's darken up the shadows. I'll click the shadow button. I'll start to move this to the left and let's see how dark we want to go here. And I think right there, minus 42. And now we can shut this layer off by clicking the eye. Here's the before and here's the after. And I like that. Now click on the top layer. It's another color grading tool. We're using this for the sky. I'm only going to work with midtones. So I'll click on the midtone button and I'm going to darken the midtones up a good bit over to like there, minus 51. Now on the combo or CX panel, we can click this button to see an overall before and after. So here is before and here's after. Now, when I study the image, I'm noticing anything I need to fix. And I'm noticing this tree line is really sticking out to me, telling me, hey, I'm too light, darken me down a bit. So that's what I'm going to do. These images do speak to you. I know, I, I may sound crazy, but <laughs> you know, it's just, they do speak to me. I need to get to my multi mass panel, so I'll click the X to close the color grading tool. Nothing changes on the color grading layers. I'm going to click this button to add a brightness contrast adjustment. And now I'm going to use a gradient, so I'm going to click on my gradient tool button. Make sure the linear gradient is clicked on. And then make sure you're going from white to black. And what I like to do is click on the drop down and open up the basics folder and click on black to white. But I check on reverse, that makes it go white to black. And what I want to do is click right about here. Click here and drag down to say like right here. Hold your shift key down to constrain that. And that's going to put a gradient there. Now if we click this button on the combo or CX panel, we can see that is where that is sitting. It's a nice little graduation through here or gradient. Click this button again to see the image again. That's step one of making a layer mask. Now the second step is to click on your layer mask calculator button that opens up your layer mask calculator. Click on sky and I want to subtract the sky from this. So click the minus button. And now if I click the double arrow, you can see that's what I've selected with that nice gradient. Isn't that cool? But I'm not done yet. I just want to work on light tones. So here's what we'll do. Click on the double arrow again to see the image. Click on the luminosity mask button on the multi mask panel and we're greeted with lights one. It always defaults at lights one and that's what I want. And now we need to click on the mask calculator, which is different than the layer mask calculator. So we'll click on the mask calculator. We want to click X to intersect because I want to intersect that tree line with the lights one luminosity mask. So click on this button here, the my channels button, and we want to choose layer mask because here's the layer mask that I want to intersect with. So click on layer mask and click equals. And just like that, we have a lights one in there. Now that is pretty darn cool, wouldn't you say? And if you think so, let me know in the comments section below. This always excites me what you can do with the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. But now we need to output this mask to that layer. So click this button to do that. And as you can see, there it is. And now we simply darken it down a bit with this brightness adjustment, only targeting lights one. So we'll start to drag this to the left. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? So we'll just take it over to like right here, minus 66. I'll shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. I think I want that a little bit darker. I'm gonna bring it down to right there, minus 82. Here's before and here's after. The next thing I want to do is dodge the foreground, bring up some light areas in this foreground area just to add some interest. And this is going to be a more creative type dodge, just singling out areas that I want to bring up. And to do that, we're going to come up and click on the zone mask button. The color picker opens up and I want to sample a tone like right here and click OK. And now we can see our zone mask. And now what I want to do is take this slider and make an adjustment just to tighten up on it. So I'll start to drag this to the right. See how it's tightening up? And I'm going to take it over to 
right there. And that number is a 116. And now I'll take this slider and tighten it up even more by dragging it over to right here. See how it really tightens up in those areas? Now you could take this slider and brighten it up or darken it down, but I think it's good just the way it is. And now we need to output this mask. I'll output it to a dodge tool. Now you could use the left or the right side of the dodge tool. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use the right side. So I'll click this button right here. And notice we have a selection indicator. That tells us that I'll be dodging through a selection. That mask is going to control the areas that I can dodge, which is going to give me a safety net, which I really like because I need all the help I can get. Now, what I want to do is dodge with a low opacity of 10%. Right now I'm at 5%. I'll type my one key. That's the shortcut to get to 10%. I have a very soft edge brush here, 0% hardness. And what I'm going to do is just start to dodge like this. See, I'll just lighten up certain areas. I'm not going to make you watch me do the whole thing, but you can see I'm just pinpointing certain areas that I can lighten up just to add some interest like out in here. You know, I don't have to lighten everything up and I'm just lightening what I think for my eye. I'm being an artist here and choosing what I want to lighten, what I want to not lighten. So I'm making that choice. I'll go ahead and finish this up and then I'll get right back to you and show you my result. But you see what I'm doing now when you paint, I have my opacity at 10%, my flow at 100%. When I paint once, it adds the lightning then when I paint again it incrementally gets a little bit lighter and lighter and lighter as I lift my brush and paint again so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I'll get right back to you and I'll finish off the dodging and show you my result and I'm back boy that was quick <laughs> now let me show you this dodge layer is shut off right now I'm going to turn it on by clicking on the eye here is the after the dodge but you see that nice little light areas in there and again just use your artist eye and dodge what you think now if you overdo it in a certain area you can type your e key and that gets your eraser tool you can lower the opacity and then blend it or erase it totally whatever you need to do we're using a transparent pixel layer in the overlay blend mode and if you use the other side of a dodge tool the left side it would give you a gray layer a 50% gray layer in the overlay blend mode. So to erase or blend there, you would use a 50% gray brush. And Tony has that brush for you right here. You can get it on the combo or the CX panel. But for a transparent pixel layer, use the eraser tool. Also take note, I have my opacity at 80%. Originally it was at 100% like this. I thought that was a little bit too strong, so I just drug it back to 80%. Remember that the opacity slider can be your very best friend because if you overdo your adjustment, you can simply slide it to the left and decrease the amount of what you've done. And now studying the image, I feel the midtones need to lighten up a bit. So to do that, it's very simple. Come up to the multi mask panel, click on your luminosity mask button, Click on Midtones 1. You have three Midtones, 1, 2, and 3. They're all Midtones. They just get incrementally lighter. This will be a gentle lightening up of the Midtones. And all I do is I'll put that to a Curves Adjustment layer. And I use the Screen Blend mode to lighten. So I'll click on the Screen button. See how the Midtones lighten up? Now that's too strong. So I'll take the Opacity slider. Again, I'll drag it back to like 44%. All right, image, speak to me. What do you need? Okay, at this point, I'd like to darken up the overall shadows just to add a little bit more shadow contrast. And to do that, we're going to come up and click on the luminosity mask button, and we want to find some darks. So here's darks one. Here is darks two. Now remember, the light areas are the selected areas, and let me click darks three. I'll go back to darks two. I think that's better. And now what we can do is I'll put that to a curves adjustment layer. We'll click on Multiply to Darken. That'll be the Multiply Blend Mode. So click this button, and you can see the overall darkening. Now, that's way too much, so we'll come to Opacity, and we'll pull back on the Opacity to right there, 50%. So let me shut this layer off. Here's Before and here's After. And I like it. A cool aspect of infrared photography is it's great at giving you very light foliage and dark skies. 
You'll see that when we convert this over to black and white, how cool that is. Now back to some image troubleshooting. When I look in this area right here, I feel it's a little too light drawing my eye. I'd like to darken just this area across here down a bit. And to do that, I'll use a gradient tool. So I'll click this button to get my gradient tool. Nothing has changed with that gradient tool. Everything is set up the way it was, so yours should be too. We want to change this from linear gradient to this guy right here, reflected gradient. So click on that. So I'm going to click right about here. Click, hold your shift key down to constrain that to go straight. And I'm going to drag this down to maybe right about there. And I think I'll click on the middle and just pull this down to say right here. And we can see our gradient over here. If I click the double arrow, you can see there is that gradient. Click the double arrow again, we get our image back. Now we're not done. I only want to target the light areas, so let's come up and click on our luminosity mask button, and I'm going to use lights one, and it defaults at lights one. Now we'll click on our mask calculator, because I want to intersect that into that gradient. So click the X for intersection, go and click on your My Channels button, click on Layer Mask, okay, and there's that gradient, click Equals, and just like that, there's lights one inside of that gradient. That is pretty exciting. And now we want to send this mask down to this layer. So click this button to do that on the multi mask panel. And there you can see it. And now we just make an adjustment. See how we can just darken that down and it's only targeting the light tones. And I'm going to bring that down to right there, minus 75. Now let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. See how your eye's not going there as much right now? And I think I want to increase the contrast just a little bit up to like right here, plus 19. Again, here's before and after. And now when I study this image, I'd like to darken down some of the shadows in the clouds. To do that, we'll use a luminosity mask. So click on the luminosity mask button. Let's go to darks one. Let's target those dark clouds. Let's try darks two. Yeah, darks two is going to be perfect for that. I may just tweak that a little bit. So I'll click on this levels adjustment. We can tweak our mask. And what I want to do is just pull this highlight slider into the left. That'll just lighten those up a little bit to right there. 241, 242, that's good. It just makes those clouds a little lighter. Now I don't want to get into the tree, so I can use a mask calculator. I'll click on the mask calculator button. I'll click the X to intersect. Click the My Channels button. Click on Sky, so I only work in the sky. Click Equals. And now you see how all the trees and everything else is dropped out. Now I do want to freehand burn that, so what I'll do is click on the left side of the burn tool. And now you can see the selection indicator showing I'm painting through a selection. I'm going to change my brush opacity to 20%. I'm typing my two key. And then all I want to do is come up here and, you know, burn. Again, when I paint, it darkens. When I lift my brush, paint again, it darkens again. So I'm just going to go ahead and darken up these clouds just like this. I'll finish this off and I'll get right back to you. But you can see what I'm doing here. And now for the results. Here is the before the burn, and now here is after. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is darken up some of the shadows in the tree line by burning a little bit, and some of these shadows in the water just to add a little bit more interest. I'll be using a 10% opacity back here and a 5% here. Let me get started. What we're going to do is I'll click on the right side of the burn tool. I'm going to use Blend Diff to help me, so I'm going to click the Edit Blend Diff button on the multi mask panel. I'm going to choose a Darks one. That'll just target the Darks one area to give me a little bit of protection. And now I want 10% opacity, so I'll type my one key, and I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. And all I want to do is come in and darken up some of these shadow areas up in here. You see that? And you don't have to get them all, but just get the ones that interest you and the ones that you feel need to be darkened. Just like that. Let me shut this off. Here's before and here's after. See, it just looks so much nicer. And down at the water, I'm going to change my brush to 5%. Type your 0 and 5 key. That'll give you 5%. And all I'm going to do here is, in the water, is just find some shadows. Again, when I lift the brush and paint again, it adds a little more darkening. And that's all I'm doing. Looking at these little swirls in here, you know, darkening up some of these areas. I'll finish this off and then I'll get right back. And now for the results. Let me turn this layer on. Right now you're seeing the before and now here is the after. 
but it just adds a lot of nice visual interest. Dodging and burning can be so effective when you're editing your images. And now it's time for a vignette. So I'm going to click my TK action button and click on the basic vignette button right up here at the top. A Gaussian blur comes up. I always just click OK for that. I'm at 30% opacity. I'm going to drag this back to 20%. Now, I do want to protect my darker shadows, so we could click No Darks 1, Protects Darks 1, and No Darks 2. And I think I like No Darks 2. So let me shut this layer off. Here is before and here is after, and I like the vignette. You can't really even tell it's there but it keeps our viewer into the frame, keeping them from going out of it. And next, I wanna add some mid-tone contrast. This can be a really great adjustment. Right now, my Edit Blend Diff panel's in the way. Click X, nothing changes on any Blend Diff layers. Click your Luminosity Mask button. I'm gonna choose Mid-Tones 2. I'll put that to a Curves Adjustment layer. And then I just wanna give this a gentle S-curve. Something like this i think right here maybe i'll pull this down a little bit more so let me shut this off here's before and here's after but a nice little bit of mid-tone contrast one final thing before the black and white conversion i want to close off the top of the image so to do that i'll grab a curves adjustment layer click on this button to put a black mask on it change it to the multiply blend mode to darken we don't see any change because of the black mask i'm going to take the opacity and pull that back to right there, 20%. Grab the gradient tool by clicking on it. Now, everything is the same from the original setup of the gradient tool, except for I'm on reflected gradient, which we don't want. So click on the linear gradient button. Very important. We don't want a reflected gradient. I'm going to click right here, drag down, holding my shift key to constrain that to keep it straight and bring it down to like right about there. Release the left click of my mouse. If you don't want to see that line right there, you can click on the curves icon. And now let me shut this layer off. Here's the before and here is the after. Just closing off the top. And now we're ready for that black and white conversion. If you have the TK Magic Mixer, click on the icon to open it up. And there it is. Now the Magic Mixer controls the channel mixer in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is click the plus and you can see we have a black and white conversion. And then you have this randomize button here. We can click it just to randomize it, just to see what kind of looks we get. We can also click these different color channels like red, green, blue. See what we like here. Here's cyan. Cyan is pretty cool. I like that one. Magenta, yellow. But my favorite was cyan, so I'll click on cyan. And now we have these sliders for cyan, red, magenta, green, and yellow, blue. Now, if I adjust this slider, watch when I adjust this, these other two sliders will work as well. That is the magic of the Magic Mixer. Tony made it so you can't screw up working with a channel mixer in Photoshop because it's really super hard to use. Most people don't even touch it because they can't use it. But now we can because of what Tony has created for us. So if I take the cyan slider and drag it to the left, you can see the change or drag it to the right. But you notice these other sliders are moving with it. Okay, so say if I get something that I kind of like, I tweak it here, and then I could take the brightness slider and adjust it to the right. And notice these other sliders move with it as I adjust this to the right. Do you see that? And then I could take the contrast slider and watch these sliders move as I move the contrast slider. Again, this is the magic of the Magic Mixer. It's pretty cool. If you don't have it, you need to grab it. It's at Tony Kuiper's web store. It's on sale right now, by the way, till the end of this month. Then I could come to magenta green and move this and watch the cyan red and yellow blue change as I move this. Isn't that cool? So you can really tweak it. And you can also save out presets, which I came up with a preset when I was doing the original edit on this image. To get to your presets, click this button right here and you could add a preset, take a preset away. But this was the preset I finally came up with, infrared three, so let's click on that. And that's my adjustment. Let me click the X to close the preset panel. By the way, when you're working with the Magic Mixer, see the little eye here? You could shut your Magic Mixer layer off by clicking this eye. There's the before, there's the after. But look at that nice high contrast infrared look. And that's what infrared is all about. Very light foliage, very dramatic skies, lots of nice contrast. But this eye is very helpful because when you're tweaking things a little bit, you may want to shut off the magic mixer layer just to see where the original colors are from. And then you could work with these sliders when you know what colors you're dealing with. And then 
turn the layer back on by clicking this button again, rather than coming over here all the time and shutting it on and off. You got it right here. It's very convenient for you. On my channel right now, I have two Magic Mixer videos. A lot more will be coming your way. So check out my channel for Magic Mixer videos. If you don't have the TK Magic Mixer, all you need to do is click this button on the Multimask panel to get a channel mixer layer right here. It won't say Magic Mixer, it'll say Channel Mixer. It's the same thing though, because the Magic Mixer controls it. But make sure you check on Monochrome, that's very important. And then just click on these fields and type the numbers from my notes in red, green and blue and then you will have the exact conversion i have this way you don't have to mess around with the channel mixer in photoshop because as i said it's really super hard to use and everything i'm telling you is in those pdf notes so don't forget to download the pdf notes as well as the image and now one final thing i want to do and that is just to reduce the midtones a little bit so to do that i'm just going to click on the curves adjustment button right here that gives me a curves adjustment layer and I just want to pull down on the midtones just a little wee bit. And I think that brings this image more into line. So let's see where we started out from. On my combo panel, I'm going to click the before after button. We started out here and now we end up here. You know what? I might have to get myself an infrared camera. I really like this infrared look. And also, by the way, if you like the color look better, just shut off these layers. And now you got your color image. So you could save off a color version, a black and white version, whichever you prefer. It's all up to you. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed my journey into infrared photography editing today. Also, I will leave a link at the end of this video for my last Magic Mixer video in case you want to check it out. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon, click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.